Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Anime Watch Club, a bi-weekly group discussion and review where the host of the What Do You Say Anime podcast nominates and votes on shows whether we haven't seen or hopefully will lead to a great discussion. On today's episode, the Covenant Boys will be reviewing the 2015 Madhouse original Death Parade. Let's meet today's social media influencers. First up, the man who takes everything to the face, our main tank, we got Johnny. Johnny, how's it going? Yeah, well, you know, just like uh, Riley Reed, I take everything to the face. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> John, Johnny, oh, God. I really got a good one. Wow, oh, Johnny. God, a great one. Oh, my God, Johnny. It'll be one of those kinds of episodes. Let's okay. go, Johnny. All right, Johnny, man. All right. Glad to have you, buddy. Uh, next up, he blames his cat for pooping on the floor, but it was actually him passed out drunk. We got cat. Cat, how's it going? Man, all I gotta say is, man, I, it was not me. <laughs> and if it was me, I was too blackout drunk to know. So, plausible deniability. Okay, that's fair enough. Uh, next fair up, enough. he's making his debut, uh, the number two funny guy of the Discord, <laughs> an avid bird watcher. We got Parfully. Parfully, how's it going? You know, uh... It's going great, Pete. Thank you so much. And I just want to say, uh, we haven't decided who number one funny guy is, number two funny guy is. That hasn't been decided in lore, so you're kind of lying to your whole audience right now. I am, but I have to make the lore somehow. Uh, our <laughs> first moderator tonight, he recently topped Australia's top 100 country singles with his viral hit, Blue Jeans, Blue Balls. We have Miles. Miles, how's it going? You know, it's going great. Um, <laughs> you know, after I had that blue Bud Light, I got that logo facing out. It's a country kind of night, you know what I mean? <laughs> Yeehaw, cowboy. And our last <laughs> and our last last battery of the night, the syndicate trader himself, we have Pat. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Sorry, you know, I'm sorry I was not part of your holy covenant. Um but at least we're not in the same server, so we're not arguing, right? We're not actually truly enemies. We're we're just uh mutuals, mutes as the the young kids call it, right? Yes. Sweet. So I'm glad to be your mute. Mute, mute, uh, Pete. I don't Stop know. Stop trying to make um, mute happen. It's never going to happen. I I think I'm hip, and that's all that matters. All right, boys. We are here to talk about Death Parade, uh, the 2015, 2015 uh, show by Studio Madhouse, who we have seen a lot of around here. Uh, for those who have been watching our clubs for a while or participating. Uh, so yeah, let's get right into it. Why don't we start off with our first impressions of the first few episodes, uh, spoiler free, uh, so nothing too big, nothing, uh, no big plot points, anything like that, and, uh, yeah, give your first thoughts and your, uh, recommendations or, or first impressions, I guess, whether you recommend the show and everything else. Uh, why don't we start off with Miles, as always? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, I... I'll tell you. So I, I recommended Death Parade. Uh, I did it by when when Pat, you know, he always spur of the moment, you know, is like, Miles, why don't you give your recommendation first? You know, I should be used to the fact that this I go today. first by now. <laughs> yeah, spur uh, of the moment. <laughs> like every other week up until like every point. Yes, but I, I wasn't used to it. So I, I quickly sorted Mal by score and picked, like, the first thing that fit our criteria that I hadn't seen. And that was Death Parade. And so that's how I picked Death Parade. Had no idea what it was about going into it. Hadn't even read the synopsis. Um, but, you know, I, I learned that it was like, uh, I don't know, kind of like Saw or something, but in like a slightly more wholesome way. Um, like slightly. Um, <laughs> uh, I think it's like a good time. It's a little... It's a little extra every now and then, so like if that annoys you, just like be prepared. But I, I think all in all, it's, it's a good show, and I, I would recommend it. That's fair. I yeah. Uh, well, hopefully you're prepared for tonight uh, with a recommendation. Um, I, I, I am. You are. Good. I'm gonna go first, right? Because we're doing spooky recommendations, spooky and there's season. honestly only so many. Yeah. And- <laughs> Honestly, you're our resident spooky man too. So I, I feel like we've got to got to give it to you first. We'll see. Yeah. We never know. We never know. Well, you'll have to stay to the end to find out. Um, Johnny, what have you got? Yeah. So first, I want to mention. Uh, damn. How, why does Miles just win everything? Just like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he he didn't even try to win this time, and he no, I didn't. Won. I didn't yeah. try very hard. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, so, anyways, yeah, like Miles, I 
haven't heard anything about the show. I just like oh, probably seen like the white. They're just like butler or bartender or whatever in like music videos or whatever. But besides that, so it's the first few episodes. I thought the first two episodes were really engaging. It's like it hooks you instantly, no strings attached. I get it. Yeah. I oh, I get nice. it. Very clever, Johnny. Well Am done. I funny yet? No. You were funny this You're time. Number three. Yeah. Number three. There you go. <laughs> yeah, number three funny guy. But yeah, this is a fun show. Uh, I've, I don't think there's too many reasons to hate it. There, there's a few emotional scenes, but like for the most part, I think it's a pretty like enjoyable ride. You don't have to be attached to the characters or anything. So yeah, I definitely recommend this. Yeah. Alrighty. Parf, what have you got? Uh, you know... I would have to agree with uh, Johnny. Uh, it definitely hooks you in for the first episode because, you know, you're just playing. It's just a wholesome anime, you know. It's very, yeah. it, you know, there it, there's childhood games being played in front of you. And what's not better than that? Twister, Old Maid, Bowling, Darts. Who doesn't Air love? Hockey. Exactly. Who doesn't love? Oh, like fighting games. Who doesn't love an anime that just brings back some childhood classics? Uh, I would definitely... <laughs> recommend this to people who aren't suspecting it at all fair enough <laughs> yeah it's, 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 how would it's you do that anime. how would i do that you'd spook them because it's spooky yeah season. yeah it's spooky season, <laughs> come, on, spooky season. Mouse, come on it's, it's, it's four and you don't know stick. come on yeah yeah it's like with hig higarashi you just lie to them to get them to watch it exactly. and then eventually they'll they'll watch it maybe except except in our case that didn't work on beat and i no, yeah, all right, but <laughs> uh, Kat, what have you got? Uh, so when I was watching it, uh, I had no idea what I was getting into. I've heard about it, and I've heard that my wife wanted to watch it. Um, and I was just like, uh, I like it, kind of. Uh, it's just, I don't know how to feel about it. Uh, but maybe that's just me. We'll figure it out as we go. As we go along in the discussion, I would recommend it. Not necessarily as like, oh, I love this anime, you should watch it. But like, as maybe you should watch this to feel how you, f to feel about like anime as a whole. Like what brand of anime you're going for. So. Yeah. All right. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, so far, pretty good overall recommendations. I I'd say all, all of us have at least recommended it in some way. Pete, what about you? Yeah, this is the type of show that I usually stay away from. I don't like sad shit. And I was presently surprised by, like, it wasn't as sad as I thought it was going to be. In some cases, it was really wholesome and kind of heartwarming in some spots. Yes, there were some sad moments where I was in my feels. But I thought this, did, this show did a really great job of expressing emotions through different scenarios through people's lives. Uh, I like the setting. I did have some qualms with the show, but for the most part, I thought this was really good, and I would recommend it. All right. Uh, and then I would agree with almost everyone else's recommendations so far, uh, or I guess everyone else's, that I would recommend this show. Uh, I had previously watched it before this event, but not too, not too far back, actually. It was probably... Uh, with my current uh, crawl in terms of anime watching, it was probably within the last 10 shows I've watched. So... So, um, I, I don't know, I, I definitely would recommend it. I, what hooked me, especially at the beginning, was uh, the way it talks about life and death and the way it addresses um, how, you know, what people do when they are faced with death, with their own death and their own mortality. That was, uh, if you like shows that question that or discuss that, uh, and the, whether that's the morals around it, the emotions around it, or uh, even the morality of having a god judge you for your life's actions like all of that gets addressed in the show and i really like that um so yeah i would highly recommend it if you if that piqued your interest at all uh but yeah so now this show is very spoiler heavy so going forward we will uh be spoiling things i mean it's not necessarily that plot driven but uh, but i do think that if you know what's going to happen going into each episode you would not nearly enjoy it as much so please be careful uh of these spoilers if you haven't watched this already you can pause this um but yeah does anyone have any uh specific talking point that they would like to get to first uh i guess i'll, I'll take it from here um so we were introduced to the roulette system of games and then with each game we had a different cast of characters 
I want to get your guys' opinions on what your favorite game was and maybe why the reasoning. Ooh, that's a good question. So, I'm going to... I don't know if I liked any of the games. Part (laughs) of the issue that I had with the show is that, like... And they do address this. Like, the show addresses this. But, like... What the arbiters are doing is absolutely fucking psychotic. Yeah. It, it, um, and so like, like to me, like it's hard to enjoy any of the games because so many of them involve like, like oh you're playing darts, but if you hit the bullseye, your wife's brain explodes or like something like that. Um, so like. You know, and even the ones that didn't involve things like that, like the arbiters would like cheat. So like the game wasn't like, I know I've gone on this rant a few times, like in the discord, not necessarily on the podcast, but like, I really like games and I like really like rules, um, which sounds really lame. And like it is, but like, I love rules because they're easily defined and you can play with them. And it's like an even footing for everyone. And so, like, the whole deception and stuff of it, as far as, like, me enjoying the game aspect of it, I I just don't really, like, think I could. Like, my favorite one would unironically be when they just played Old Maid with the old lady, and they had a nice conversation, and they played Old Maid together. Like, that, that's probably my answer, because of that reason. It's not that the other ones didn't pose, like, interesting scenarios, because it did, it's just that, like, they weren't really games in my mind if that makes sense and so like i didn't really care for it too much um the bowling was kind of sweet too so uh shout out to the bowling because i don't think anything that weird happened during the bowling um so you know hats off to the arbiters for letting two people just be freaking normal for once um (laughs) as they you know figure out where they're going to assign them to the, okay. the the fate of their lives relies on a random game that's assigned to them randomly. So thank goodness the professional darts player didn't get darts right. You know, like, do we of... think it was actually random? By the way, um, um, that's we can discuss that later. But Cat, go ahead. Okay. So Miles, I want to chirp off of you for a little bit uh, because I I know that me and you are two of the few people. Also, Parfully, uh, me, you, and Parf are the three people right now during in this discussion that have played Dungeon Master in, in D&D. And I'm not sure if uh, you have, uh, if you've scrubbed numbers for a story, but I most definitely have. Uh, and I feel like the things that they're doing are a lot, are a lot more kind of like having that happen for a story in D&D. Uh, like, you know, trying to push somebody, trying to push somebody's character to the point where they can understand something about the character and they, like, start playing a little bit different or they uh, or they get pushed to an edge and have to switch their playing style, something like that. I feel like that is, a, that is an accurate representation of, uh, of what was going on during, yeah. the, uh, during the games. I, I think um, that's a good thing just to quickly say uh i very 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 rarely change what the dice say um like i i hate if i ever feel that it's necessary for some reason like i i just i I don't like to do it because again like i know i can within the rules but like the mechanics are sacred to the game and if you know the dice say that there's an easy boss fight there's an easy boss fight and if they say there's an impossible one there's an impossible one it's just how it is yeah but also uh so before i go on with the discussion i do want to say that my favorite game was the (laughs) and maybe this is saying uh saying differences in like me and miles's play style of D &D. my favorite game was the darts because i just liked I just like seeing having that poetic justice because you know sometimes when like people are playing D and D and then like you know good and damn well that somebody's bluffing 
and then the dice say exactly that. That is, that is perfect. And that was just the whole dart game. So, uh, but yeah, so I, yeah, that's actually pretty much all I got. Uh, Johnny, um, you got, Johnny, did you have a favorite game? Uh, yeah. So, so are we talking about like favorite game or favorite story of the game? I guess both. Those, maybe I don't. Yeah, I, I, I guess I'll say both. So, like for me, I'll agree with Cat that my favorite game was the Darts because I thought that that game had like the most established rules. Like Miles said, like there weren't like were like ass poles out of nowhere. So like the game actually made sense. But to me. Like, I don't think the rules to the game matter that much in this case. Because the whole point of this is to judge if they're, quote-unquote, like, a good or a bad person, right? So, and what the game does is, like, it's supposed to, like, bring out, as they say, the darkness of your soul to, like, show, like, what people do in these extreme situations. And I feel like, in that sense, the Arbiters are kind of right in that they have to make these, like, insane scenarios. Which is why, like, to... I think my my favorite story will go to the one with the detective and the person because I think I think that had the most engaging story. To be fair, it was longer than the other one, so it's kind of unfair, but I didn't really like that. The game itself was like it was like an add-on to the story. It was there just to like make them have their Vietnam flashbacks or whatever. So it's facilitate just, the story. It's almost like yeah, the exactly. games always were there to facilitate like, the The game is secondary to their stories. Which is why, like, I don't think the rules of the game matter too much in that sense. That's fair. Yeah, what about you, Parf? Um, I personally, I mean, story-wise, I think the best story is the bowling story. I loved the couple. Uh, yeah, it's a bit weird with the whole uh, plastic surgery thing, but it happens. Uh, <laughs> but I, my favorite game is definitely the video game fighting style thing. Just because each kid, both the mom and the kid got their own personalized characters, even though it was weird. I also loved her special attack of having her kids fight for her. Yeah. Like, who doesn't love some good child warfare, right? Um, I think that was absolutely a perfect game. I didn't care about the rules. I think the rules were definitely a lot looser in that game because, uh, again, she gets a whole army of kids. He doesn't. But, um... I also agree with Johnny. The sto- the games don't really matter. The story, it just they're just used to like see who's gonna do what. So yeah, I like them. Yeah, I don't know if I really had a favorite game myself. I enjoyed more the um, the way that the 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 players played the games. I guess you know, and the 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 different strategies or thoughts going into it. You know, because like some people right away were really ultra competitive about it and others weren't others were more concerned about like where the hell they were or what what was going on whatever um what are the stakes of the game what am i gambling with whatever um i i don't know i i didn't really yeah i didn't really pay attention to the games too much although i will say i think if we're going purely off of what um game we enjoyed the most probably bowling then because it was the one that had the least um what what cat call it scrubbing of the dice like you know the bowling didn't have any um any drastic you know influence from the arbiter versus all these other games which first off are chance which good ones you get anyways but then also um which ones you uh it, but but then also the arbiters influencing the outcomes of them in some cases which is i didn't like i also did not like that um uh but we can get to that a little after this discussion what have you got pete so I'm a, I don't know if anybody will get this comparison, but if you were ever a fan of professional wrestling, you you set up the matches in a way where it leads. It, you start hot. Uh, you need like a cooler match, and then that leads to like the main event. And because of it, in like the middle ground where I, we kind of like got like a breather, it was the bowling story. I thought that was really refreshing because the. The stories we kind of had, especially episode one, are very serious and drama-filled tone setting up the show. And the bowling one was really refreshing because not everything is just filled with drama and stuff like that. I just love the couple. I thought their story was 
real in a sense of I can see that happening in real life type of thing where the the mom the like the the TV show mom getting strangled by the assistant was a little extra I think as Miles would call it um so I thought it was just like a really refreshing like middle episode I got to, I got to like breathe in refresh myself but I also really enjoyed uh the old maid episode just how that started setting up the final three episodes which was kind of the main story itself I, th- I feel like this kind of did have like two stories but i really enjoyed how that whole s- that set up with um the girl uh ona and it, it was just really well told and the old lady was so heartwarming and fun and she she like accepted it and it was cool to see like deckham be cool with it because she lived a fulfilling life and that was like his thing that he just wanted somebody to, like he, he like envied people who lived f- fulfillment life. So those two were just like neck and neck one A one B. Those were like my favorites. All right, yeah. Uh, so I guess one thing I wanted to talk about um, relating to this show, I kind of brought it up already in my uh, introduction, but the thing that I really liked about this show is that it did it did two things. Uh, really well for one i thought it addressed the the fight or flight or the you know the the way people face their own death right like the way that they how different people might react to the fact that they that they are dead or that they are being judged by an arbiter whatever you want to say like um i i liked how it offered so many different perspectives of how people might react and what they might do to try to save themselves or not or how they might accept their fate, or try to deny it, whatever. Um, I thought they did that really well, and I also liked how, um, right away, the first thing that I thought when I first watched the show in the first episode was, well, you're you're forcing these people into these situations where they have to make a decision, um, and, and like, like you said, you're, we're we're stressing them out. We're ma- we're trying to get like what's truly in their heart or whatever, but. Um, I like how in the first episode it kind of shows that these arbiters are not always correct in their decisions or not all, not all knowing or not all understanding because, uh, you know, that we uh, you can make the argument and and I would make the argument that, you know, the guy is the one who I believe gets sent to the uh, sent to hell, so to speak. Right. And then the girl is sent to heaven, you know, like in, in which one? In episode one in episode one, isn't it? No, in, other way. Was, yeah, was no, it was the other way around? Way. Because way around. Deckham fucks up. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. you know, I'm picturing it as if the the guy was the one who um was in it was not it was innocent or whatever. That's my fault. Um, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, again, that it's been a while since, or it's been a couple months since I watched it, the first episode. Um, but yeah. So they, but either way, my I guess my my point still stands that it, like shows how Deckham does fuck up. Uh. Which, of course, is only a matter of perspective, though, too, because I think you could argue that the other person might not be as bad or or that, oh, they showed their true colors in that specific moment or or, or whatever you want to say. So that's what I really liked about um, m- most of the episodes showed that as Deckham continued to learn and, you know, be around uh, Ona, I guess we'll call her Ona. Um, I, I don't even remember if she got a name. Maybe at the end, the last episode she did. Chiyosaki. Um, Chiyosaki. No, oh, that's right. Yeah, they do. They do reveal it in the end. Yeah. Um, so Chisaki, whatever Ona uh, is, what she's called on Mal. Um, uh, you know, she she clearly has an influence on uh, Decim or, or Decim, and, and I enjoyed that a lot. Do we um, want to talk about the qualms with the arbiters? Though? Well, I, I yeah, I, this this bounces off what like Pat, I guess, was saying because like I, I I want to hear your guys' perspective on this. So, like, out of everyone we ever see in the entire afterlife, I think there is probably, if I was an Arbiter, maybe one person I would have I'm leaning one, maybe two. Okay, so my my thought is maybe the the guy in Episode 9 who is clearly just a sociopath. Um, But, like, he only is one post-horrible tragedy. So, like, I don't know, maybe. Is, when the options are eternal damnation and you get another go at it, I'm like... And rebirth, too. It's not even, like, your own soul, right? Exactly. Like, it's, like, it, it's your soul, but in, like, a whole new circumstance or whatever, right? Like, you don't have, like, a, it's not a continuation fully. So, like, 
you know, why... To me, it's like, as long as someone isn't, I mean, just absolutely the worst, um, where I think no matter what situation they're brought up into, they're they're gonna fuck it up. Like, uh, I would be inclined to give them another chance, especially, you know, like, even if the wife had cheated on her husband, right? Like, that's not a good thing. You shouldn't do that. Um, should your soul be eternally damned forever for that? Like, especially, like, when it, like, comes out in such a way that involves, like, being tortured, and, like, it's just, to me, it just seems really harsh. And they do address it, like, how it's probably not the best method that they use, but I want to know everyone's thoughts on, like, like, who, like, Pete, who would you have sent to the Void? Um, I guess I would lean the guy who killed the cop. Um, like, I, I don't think killing the person who, like, sexually assaulted his daughter was justified, or his daughter, his sister, sister, is justified, but he did kill the cop. He was completely innocent, just he was in a moment, he fucked up, and he killed, like, an innocent person. Well, and, I'll, yeah, uh, innocent. Well, I mean... In- innocent. At, okay, in hindsight, he didn't know that. <laughs> Not a great cop. It, it, it was I, coincidentally he killed the person he thought he killed. It was like a double blind or yeah. something. I don't know. Like, like well, I guess, like okay, I guess, like if I was in his position and at the time I knew that the cop like saw my sister like getting I don't know sexually assaulted slash borderline whatever, I probably would maybe stab him too. But like he didn't know that at the time, and so he did think he, he was the guy though. Like he did think that. What? And he was the guy. No, no, I. I the cop. I mean, like, killing the cop. Because, like, the cop... Yeah. He killed the cop thinking it was the dude's friend. Oh. Yeah, I mean... I still... Th- I personally think that's wrong. And so- I, I agree that that's wrong. I just don't... Like, my thought on that is, like... Like, I think killing the guy who did that to your sister is wrong. Like, I, I'm not pro, like, yeah. vigilante violence. What I'm saying, again, is that the two options are not... It, it You know, it, it's... You get another like I don't think he's an irredeemable human being. No, no, no. Or, yeah, that's what my point was, I guess. Yeah, I guess it's like I'm, I'm thinking this in terms of like prison time. Like, would this <laughs> would this guy get 25? And the answer is probably yes. So like, if I had to justify, like, if I had to pick somebody, it's like him. But like, I'm on like the fence. I don't even know if I really would pick anybody. I know I said one, maybe two. But it's like a maybe one, maybe two. I'm not really like I could be sold either way on like these. Most of these people just had like a lot of them were just like had like sometimes like a shitty childhood or like had social problems. Like in terms of the otaku where like he wasn't a bad guy. He just like didn't develop like everybody else and went through things differently. And it's all a matter of perspective, though, because like someone else might argue like oh, well, that guy wasted a perfectly good life or a perfectly good opportunity, and he doesn't deserve the chance he got. You know, like, that's what I think, is, like, the show addresses the fact that being more, like, it's it's pretty a, a gray area. Who's who who's a good person? Who's a bad person? Who, again, like Miles said, in this case, deserves to rot in hell for eternity? Or who yeah. gets to be a, you I know, guess, like, like, that's... The, like, suicide to me isn't, like eternal damnation like you got one life and you screwed it up so you're into the void forever i i didn't really vibe with that and i hope that his answer was that he got reincarnated because i thought like his he did we saw it okay yeah. sure. that, that was the test at the end because like she had the choice to like quote unquote kill someone but then she refused yeah uh, it, it's just yeah it's more of just like the qualms with the games the arbiters and like the situations if there was like a mass murderer i feel like you didn't need to have this game set up for these people that are dying like you already know the answer to the question and i thought some of them were like borderline like do these people really need to be here right now like these are like like the two teenagers in the bowling alley just they're just teenagers like why do they have to like even attempt to play for reincarnation it's not like neither of them were like awful people they actually seem like genuine people so everyone gets judged whether like no matter how 
they die. Yeah, right? so I guess that's, that with that's the, the old fl- yeah, that's like the flaw. Okay, so guess. like they're probably. there in the because the arbiters are not all knowing, so they need a way to figure out what kind of people people are. So even if you're like a good person, y- you get a test, and if you're not, if you don't have all of these deep dark secrets, you get to play bowling or old maid probably, and you know nothing's coming out. But you know if you secretly murdered two people, um. You know, you have to play death air hockey. Oh, so like you think it's already like the games were like rigged, kind of like they already knew type of thing. Oh, is it, I think that there is some pretty stuff that implies that at least a okay. little bit because the, like the bowling was associated with the lives of like the two teenagers and stuff. Like, um, you know, the the otaku was much better at the arcade games. It was, like, unbalanced in that way. Like, I think that they didn't do a lot of random stuff. I just don't think that that was the case. Okay. Um, I agree. Uh, I think it was disbalanced, too, because, like, you look at dar- darts as a game that's played at a bar a lot of the time, right? And so they had the uh, the wife and the husband in the first episode who... You know, the wife would go out or whatever, and that was how she got into the the trouble, wasn't it? Like, uh, yeah, or at least got in in the position of cheating, quote unquote. Uh, same thing with playing the the girl playing Twister. You know, that's a very like teenage or like a groupy kind of game, I guess. Like that, that's the way I interpreted it. It allowed so, them to get intimate with each other, right? Because right, she was right. like super into, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I think I, it was it all... intentional. Yeah, I agree. I think the, the dice were fixed, but not guaranteed, if that makes sense. You know, they were maybe w- lightly weighted is maybe a good way to put it. But Kat, go ahead. So uh, personally, and maybe this is just me, but uh, in the first game, I think that I think I have to agree with uh, Nona with the husband. I believe that he... I think that he, even though he didn't like, uh, he didn't bring a lot of like other memories to the table uh, that we saw. I think that his trust issues uh, ruined a lot more in his own life. And although I think, like, I like, if it was related to anxiety. I think that I would go with reincarnation, but if it was not related to anxiety and it was the like kind of like narcissistic, everyone is out to get me, so I'm going to get them first, or uh, I'm going to, uh, or I'm going to slowly tear you down while I uh, while I try and get ahead or something like that. If it was like that, I think that I would send him in the void. But I, there were. Personally, I don't think there were too many, uh, to make a decision like that, I don't think there were, was enough, uh, evidence for me to, like, for me to go, okay, you go to the void, you get reincarnated. So, like, at that point, I think that it would be, like, almost all reincarnation. Like, that's... That's how it goes. It would have to be like, I need to see more. I need to know what's going on. And, and even with that, um, I think that if somebody is getting reincarnated and they get another go at it, do we see and like, do we see somebody who comes back into the, into like the games that has had a second chance? Yeah, I would assume no, because we never saw it. So that's the only thing I can assume is that we don't see their their prior lives don't get taken into account. Um, Kat, would you... This, this was really interesting to me, because, like, Nona said that thing about the guy, but then in the next episode we learned that the wife did cheat on the husband, mm-hmm. but just not... Not the time that he thought yeah. she cheated on him. Yeah, with, it was right? a one-night stand. So he was being paranoid. And then, like, right. But he was right at some point, but, like, maybe yeah. he was really distant, and that drove her away. And it's just, like, the whole thing is quite tragic. Well, that, that's why um, I think the whole point is that neither of... You could argue either of them it deserves the damnation, and that... If you're going just off of what you saw, I think you could argue... 
either of them could have been damned and or either of them could have been reborn. Um, it's all a matter of like just perspective or personal opinion, which is why I that's why I love the first episode so much, because it was like it, it, it showed the the serious flaw in what was going on, you know, yeah, it, it, it definitely does. And like, um, you know, I, I, I think that that, um, you know, it is interesting, but Harfuli, you have something to say. I just wanted to say, whoops, I just wanted to say, uh, I personally like, cause being reborn is like kind of dope. It's kind of like a big deal. So while I don't think any of them necessarily deserve being cast in the void, I also don't necessarily think all of them deserve to be reborn. I think the couple deserve to be reborn. I don't think the mother or the, uh, the otaku really deserve to be reborn. I mean, but like they, it's it's kind of tough since there's only two choices: being cast in the void and being reborn. I don't necessarily think uh, I would cast a lot of them in the void, but I'd cast the Otaku and the mom in the void. Neither of them deserve to be reborn wow. because like they don't yeah. deserve to be reborn. That's my that's the thing. But like, so if you're this is interesting because like to me, if like say you don't think like like the mom wasn't great, but you know she like originally got into the circumstances where she became a city person in an attempt to help her family. Right. Um, they were like destitute. She takes on this reality TV show to like help her family. But like in the process, you know, it, it goes to her head and, you know, she, she ends up hurting her family to me. I guess when the options are, you are dead forever and ever. And you are in constant misery and pain, or you get to, you know, give an get another go. Um, I'm always going to err on the side of caution. And if someone did something bad, but it originally started with good intentions, I'm going to let them have another go at it. No one's perfect. So, like, like. You know, like, what do you think about that? Like, are you willing to punish someone forever because you think, like, maybe they don't deserve, like, the reward? I mean, that, see, that's why I said it's difficult because, like, there's only two choices that I have here. Uh, I, I mean, like I said, I would cast at least the otaku in because he did nothing with his life. He really did. I mean, Pete made a fair point. Like, he did have a rough, like, everybody has a rough childhood. He didn't develop the same way that we did, but like he did absolutely nothing with the life he already had. I don't think he should be given rewarded for that by giving being reborn. I don't, I don't think he deserves the void. A reward. I, well, I like, that's, 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 that's what I'm saying. I'm viewing that being reborn is kind of a reward. I mean, you're getting a second chance on your soul. At well, least. That, well, then, your so, memories aren't, but like your soul is. And I think I was, that's definitely a cool thing. I, I would love to ask them, Parv, do you think, uh, uh, uh What's it? Ch Chisaki? Do you think Chisaki deserves a second chance? Because she kind of did the same thing the the guy did. She ended her life and like killed herself. She had all, and she had arguably yeah. a better opportunity than than, than he what, did. Yeah, than he to succeed in life. And I would, and granted, I'm coming. I'm asking you this question because I'm kind of coming. I agree with you that you know re being reborn is like a a gift or it's a bonus thing. But at the same time, I don't know. Though I don't view rebirth as a if i don't have memory or some affiliation with my past life then what's the point of rebirth who cares right like that's the way i've always looked at it but um but sorry it, it, oh, yeah. that, that's completely fair i mean like but like because she also did what the otaku did i mean the difference there for me at least is she kind of did something with her life but still i have to like they, they did the same thing i don't uh, it's just so difficult considering there's only two choices i yeah. honestly don't think if the void was an endless uh, pain, if, if their soul was an endless pain, I don't think the void would be that bad. I mean, sure, you're like it's death. They've already died, you know. So, like, I don't think casting a soul into the void is like necessarily the worst thing. Because, yeah. like, I, if there, I, I'm saying if there wasn't the pain part. Oh, that, that's yeah, why it's sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's why it's difficult. Too. I would argue too that being yeah. reborn without knowing, without your like, it's your soul, but it's not yeah. you. I would yeah. almost rather get damned to eternal pain because that's yeah. at least living I mean, or at least experiencing life. things. I don't want to no. do this twice. 
Well, yeah, yeah, I yeah. Want to do this fucking twice. No, but like at least you're conscious and you realize who you are. You know, like yeah. that's again that's scary. It terrifies me the the idea of being reborn and not knowing who I am or like it doesn't appeal to me at all. So like I I'd almost rather still know who I am than you know be suffering. I mean, even if you're turn what, what's eternal damnation, you're at least gonna have some fun or some way to entertain yourself. Um, but sorry, we've been talking a lot, Johnny. What have you got? All right, that's well. Well, I wanted to say it was 15 minutes ago, but it's fine. So yeah, that that's <laughs> happened sometimes in a yeah. discussion. Mm-hmm. If you bring it back up, though, we can always circle back around. What do you got? Oh, that's a good buzzword for business people, Miles. I love that. Circle back. Yes, <laughs> I'm a company man. Don't wait for my chance to talk. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Uh, so the thing I wanted to talk about was that like, I don't believe that anything you do in life deserves like something that's like infinite you know like well how how long is a life like like 80 years no matter what you do in, in like those years there's nothing you can do that justifies eternal suffering like i think even if you're like the absolute worst as long as you have the chance of like changing that like maybe maybe you do deserve some punishment because like maybe you're you're a mass serial killer but like i don't i still don't think you're justified to spend like literally eternity suffering. What if he's kill? What if the mass killer is killing because he's scarred because someone killed his mom when he was young? You know, like, I, and does that make him like? How many people does he have to kill what to make that Dexter? not a justification? You know, like there you go, exactly. Like so, like that's the point. I think that the show good Dexter make, season one through four Dexter. Let's put. Well, either way, See, uh, what season's awful. Dexter. Never mind. We won't get into the morality of Dexter. Um, yeah, but like. <laughs> I, I, don't, I, I agree with you, Jai. It's like you can't just judge someone entirely off of, especially off of one game. Yeah. Or whatever. And I think especially when you have, show, you have multiple lifespans in theory. Like, I think everyone should get like at least three. You know what I mean? And if that soul has been a serial killer, like four times out of five. Okay. In the dumpster, the yeah, soul is defective. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm talking <laughs> about. Because like, if you were just like straight up born a psychopath no matter what and your existence will bring suffering to others no matter what then like that's like yeah there's not really much you can say like that person Um, shouldn't be alive but i think anyone that has a chance to turn their life around and to like do better i think they deserve a chance so here's another thing uh i wanted to direct this at miles uh when earlier when you said uh if they had good intentions uh then then they deserve another chance and i wanted to bring up this saying uh the path to good intentions it i mean the path to hell is lined with good intentions uh so you know how like people are just very uh yeah like, i mean i yeah. i agree with it and i I'm, I'm not saying that like I think these people did the right thing. I'm not saying that I think that they're all, they all lived good lives or are good people. Um, what I think the ultimate flaw in this system is, is that, as Parfuli had mentioned, there are two options. One of them is fine to decent, depending on your point of view. And the other is awful pretty much regardless of your point of view. And those are the two options. So it's like, in order for someone, you know what I mean? Like, like think about like, you know, our prison system, there's a like, you know, let's just say 50% of the population in the United States is against the death penalty. I don't know what the numbers are, but you know, it's a hot topic as that sort of thing. Um, you know, people are against life in prison. Those are all much more like tangible, less bad punishments than eternal damnation. Um, and so, you know, like um, that to me, like if if we as a species, as a society, question: Is it ethical to you know? kill someone who's done these things that are wrong? Is it ethical to keep them locked up for the rest of their lives? Like, and that's like a debate people have. Then in my head, throwing someone into torture eternity is just always wrong, essentially, you know? Um, 
that's my my thought on it you know like for especially with like the people that we we interact with right we're not like no one's like you know jeffrey epstein didn't show up in this show which is probably a good thing but like you know there isn't just some you know like hitler's not there we don't have to deal with someone who's like there's no one who is comically evil in this no french Um, people you know yeah no dio fuck the french (laughs) And and so to me, um, even though some of them are for sure shitty people, um, you know, that doesn't mean that they they shouldn't get another go at it, I guess. Um, That's my thought. Um, I so here's my thing. I think there's another flaw with this system. I mean, there's obviously several flaws with the system, but like another one is that um there there's no looking back at the past lies as we mm-hmm. see because as because here's one thing that you mentioned uh during the two weeks of uh of during the two weeks we were watching the show, uh, you mentioned that there was, uh, oh, crap, I don't remember what exactly you said, but like, uh, like you mentioned earlier in this episode, like there was no looking back at the, uh, at the earlier lives. So we can't really tell if there, if the lives that we had, uh, if the lives that these characters had beforehand were worse or better or whether they improved or whether they declined we can't tell and if we had those i'm not saying that it would make the that it would make the decision any easier but i would say that if they well actually it kind of would but at the same time we would also know how many times they've tried and how many times they've improved and and declined and things like that like at yeah, that, it, you would be there would be a feedback system to yeah. to the system as opposed to judging off of an N of one, which seems ridiculous. Um however, we are 40 minutes in and we are still on our first point. Um so we are going to pivot now. Um it, 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 this is going to be a, an interesting show, I think. There's a lot you can talk to to uh, to a lot of the stuff. So we're probably not going to be able to get to everything that we want to sadly. But Johnny, you wanted to talk about like the main story arc, the plot of our main girl, um, you know, her little journey that we go on with her and Deckham. Uh, do you have any points about that specifically that you wanted to bring up? Uh, yeah. So the first one w- where I found was interesting and it's not really about the girl. It's about the arbiters at the whole is how they, they say like arbiters cannot feel emotions, but to yes. me it's, like, it's very clear that like, all of them feel emotions. <laughs> I, I, I do. It's yes. just like, yeah. Like they say, like oh, they like they're merely like puppets or whatever. But, like no, they they have free will. They can do what they want. Like they the, obviously the, feel yeah. like the the red haired Bakugo guy gets pissed off a lot. You know exactly. Like, he he sure, like the only one that I felt like didn't feel emotions was Deckham. Um, who even though I, he was the one that's he, I, yeah, was. he was the one. It, it was you know it was a little weird. Um, what did everyone think about that? Because like. They all have a rapport and they joke around and stuff. Like, I, I was willing to just take it as in, like, you know, they have some amount of emotions, but they're relatively shallow or whatever. Like, you know, what what did Pete, what did you think about that? No, uh, to me, it didn't really, like, it wasn't, like, off-putting. Like, I didn't, I think it'd be a really boring story if the Arbiters were just, like, zero one zero one on a computer, enter input type of yeah, thing. I agree. I felt like it's... they were, just, like, how the world was set up i it didn't take away from me anything i thought it was perfectly fine to be honest yeah it's just it's just that like to me it's just like the whole wording behind the rule is like maybe it's like arbiters aren't supposed to like feel for the humans that would have made a lot more sense because like you know like as a judge you can't like put your feeling put your emotions over like a crime or whatever it, if they worded it like that would make a bit more sense again like it's not that big of a deal to me it was just something i noticed which was like kind yeah of like, no i, I, I agree it's something i did did that bother anyone else or did they did they at least strike out them as weird um or 
was it not something anyone else um i i think i i noticed immediately i think it was again i think that's kind of intentional though is that like oh they say like the rules or whatever are are set to that the arbiters aren't supposed to feel anything I, I don't remember them saying that they actually don't. I thought it was that they aren't supposed to feel emotion or, or no, something. They straight up can't because, like, Deccan was said, like, they somehow planted emotions inside his brain or something. Interesting. So, like, it's, a, it's implied that they, like, cannot feel emotions. Yeah, I... Do, but, you know. Yeah, well, yeah, that's why... I've, uh, the way I always interpreted it was the that they can't allow themselves to feel emotions or they're not supposed to try... To, or they're supposed to try to not to or whatever. Um... But I don't know, I, that, that's just a, such a, a thing that, you know, any, any time, is there ever a story where there's actually someone who doesn't feel emotion, you know? Yeah. Like, um, I don't think there ever is one, <laughs> I, not that I can think of, even like, especially when you come out and say, this thing doesn't feel emotion, like, how often does that thing actually feel emotion? By the end of the story, it always feels emotion, I'll tell you that. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So I, I I don't know. Um, I guess my big complaint with the show, and this is coming from someone who really really liked it a lot and and enjoyed the hell out of their first viewing of it. I, it felt like the characters just some of them existed for almost nothing. Uh, like they didn't need to exist. Like I was talking about this with Miles a little earlier today, but like the redhead Ginty or whatever his name is. I I was saying like he's just Deccan, but. Uh, where he's like dense and doesn't like process emotions well or understand them, except he's also set in his ways and not willing to learn or change, you know, like he's just dense. Like, um, and a lot of the extra characters like Clavis, the guy who does the elevators, like, was he funny? Yeah. But like, did he provide anything to the story? No. What are your thoughts on Mayu? Mayu. I enjoyed Mayu, but like, did I, did we need her? No, I th- <laughs> you know, like I, I'm in the same boat. That's what I was wondering. Yeah, like and Kin, like was she cool to like give us a little bit of insight of the oh, world? Oh, I like, think Mayu was important. Um, I think she was uh, important to maybe like for the audience, but like for the uh, yeah. for the story itself. And this is my main complaint about the show is that it felt that I hated the ending. I I absolutely hated the ending because it felt it felt like. I, I liked the conclusion of um, Chisaki and Deccan's arc together. Like, that was fu- fine in my eyes. Um, I did not like that it was like, oh, and then that's it. Show's over. It's like, what the fuck was Oculus doing? Like, who was he? What was his point? Like, why did they include him in the story? Why did they in- include, like, half of these extra characters if they're not going to resolve uh what was going on and like i I know miles you brought up earlier like oh maybe they were setting up for a second season or whatever but or or trying to build the world out but like i don't know if you're gonna leave all these questions unanswered it's gonna annoy the hell out of me and it's not even like they were offered like i don't know you know like openly closed endings or whatever it was just like nope that we didn't get to it you know that i I think they got to everything like because uh, the question wasn't ever the question was like, what is Nona doing? We learned what she was doing. Is she going to get in trouble for it? We learned, like, no. Right? Uh, it, it, I, I agree that I don't think it was written in a very satisfying way. It was, like, kind of anticlimactic. Um, but, like, I don't have a ton of questions about the world. I don't think... That, like, there wasn't a lot that was, like positive that they didn't answer well, like who who is oculus what is uh oculus is known as superior who like took over after god died okay but like what is what are his intentions what's gonna happen and what's gonna happen next you know like that that's where i got very annoyed too i mean like, he's gonna observe Deckham and see how it happens and see how nona's experiment goes right like that's what's gonna happen all right so i guess i'm no, there is. Yeah, that's the thing. You can't read the manga. The this was sourced off of a well, it's, it's original. original. It's original, but it was based off of a um a short film. Uh, oh, that, interesting. And, yeah, they also, took it. Also, it's it. not a manga. Interesting. No, yeah, it's a completely studio, uh, like completely original. Well, original story. Yeah. Like I, I yeah. know, no source material so, like in manga or light novels or something like that. It's yeah, no all it, original baby. The yeah, OVA uh, that was. Uh, 
that w- it was based off of was uh, aired in 2013, and it was called Death Billiards. Mm-hmm. So that's technically the source material. Uh, no, that's just like what's based off of. It's not the actual source material. Yeah, There's no book written quotations. Uh, I guess that doesn't really work with a uh, audio medium. So there are quotation marks with source material. Uh, anyway, moving on. Uh, yeah, well, uh, Kat, did you have something that you wanted to talk about from the last point? At least you uh, implied you did. N- not, not really anymore. Uh, you guys are, already, yeah. you guys I addressed it or whatever. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I will say, I, after saying how I felt like there were a lot of things that weren't answered with with the characters and how annoyed I was about it, the characters were really fun in this show. I thought they all had uh, fun personalities. Uh, maybe the OP helps out with that a lot, too, like letting them all just like be fun and happy or whatever, like and, and puts you in that mood where you're like willing to like the characters a lot. But I, I think overall they were all... Um, enjoyable. Uh, I don't know if everyone else felt that way. No, Pat, I I honestly think that if you cut out the Mayu and the idol parts and made this 10 episodes, I think I would have given it the exact same score. Like, was her story... I liked her story. Like, there's, there's nothing, like, wrong with it. I just feel like the main story of, I believe, of the story is Deckham and the girl. Like, that is the focal point. And it right. cut the bowling thing out that. before I would have cut Mayu out. I, I see. We can, This is just my personal opinion. I I don't think the Mayu part is necessary for the story. And well, the bowl. Why is the bowling thing? Necessary? It's the same thing. It's 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 not yeah, necessarily the part of the either. story. I guess because Mayu and that guy got like two episodes, and like her conclusion, I thought was kind of pretty lackluster. To be honest, I didn't I didn't really enjoy how those two ended because the dude. Well, Cause she was like madly in love with him. Like you saved my life, all this stuff. And he's just like, you're just like another fan, but like, thank you for like showing me like my fans are my life type of thing. And it seemed like really romantic when he like, wasn't really feeling it, I guess. Um, but I did want to make this point on how I was going to compare this to Violet Evergarden where Violet Evergarden had like its main story told through these other stories through the notes and I thought that was going to be the route that uh, Death Parade was going to go, where we had the main story with, like, Deckham and the girl, and then the story continued through these stories. And it kind of did, but, like, it kind of really didn't at the same time. I feel like there was parts where it was just to showcase the world. and Another I think, scenario. Yeah, the world they did that episode right? yeah. one, which I thought was very important, but, like, when they did it with... Uh, some of the other parts, I didn't feel like it was necessary to the overall story of, like, the, the main storyline of Death Parade. Hmm. You don't have to agree. I don't know if I agree. You don't have to Yeah. Agree. This is just my opinion. This is just, like, how I yeah, view it. Yeah, I guess, like, because I think things like, like, for example, like, the idol story, right? Um, Mayu is there because it shows us, like, the Arbiter's ability to doubt themselves in, like, a different way. Because Ginty doesn't know what to do with her. Um, so he like has to come up with like a different sort of test for her. And y- you see how that like affects him. Episode 9, again, is like something that directly affects into the main plot. Um, you know, so it, like a lot of them, I feel like, like the first one for sure does the main plot. The idol one affects into like the main question about like how the arbiters act and what is the purpose of like how they're acting and stuff. The serial killer guy one does as well. Um, You know, so I I think that at least a lot of them, you know, do do that to some extent. Um, You know, I, I don't know. No, like, I I see your point, like, absolutely. I guess it's just, like, how I prefer my storytelling, I guess. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm just saying that I think it's essentially identical to how Violet Evergarden does it. Agree to disagree, my man. Okay, let me rephrase. It is essentially identical (laughs) to how Violet Evergarden does it. It's close, it's close. (laughs) Um, now I'm not. I think it's about. Okay, I think it's it's kill me too. here. Um, 
it's not as good as how Violet Evergarden you know does what? it. We're, oh, not, oh, we're not getting there. We're not going there. We're not going there. I said it's not as good. Oh, I misheard you. Sorry. I just assumed. I just I understand why you thought you were fine. In my brain, in my brain, I just assumed there was going to be something negative about Violet. No, <laughs> it's a smart that's assumption only- on your part, Pete. But no, that is not what I said. That's the only um, time he's ever going to phrase it. You better clip it. That's. I, I think that the side stories in Violet and how those tie into Violet are are such a strength of that show. Um, whereas this show, I think, like, as you were saying, Pat's just a little giddy over there. I see well, him just I, was, I had a joke. I had a joke about how, um, you <laughs> know, 7 out of 10 Violet is a masterpiece it. score on the exactly. podcast. Exactly. So, um, Miles thinks Violet Evergarden's a masterpiece. So where you know. the main story here, I think, shines a little brighter than the Violet main story. Um, so let's, let's finally buckle down. Uh, there's a lot to talk about in this show, I know, but... We're going to have to cut some of it, but I refuse to cut the main story. Let's talk about the, um... Oh, wait. No, Par <laughs> no, you to touch no. on this. We're going to, no, we're going to let him. We're going oh, long. Forgot. Yeah. No, Parker, no, what no. Do you no. Who cares? Okay, fine. Going. I will. Go. I just wanted to say, uh, ty- kind of what Pete was saying, because Pat said, oh, the opening, you know, the ca- you, you see a lot of the characters and how jovial they are and, you know, how um, it makes them seem so good and that he liked all the cast. You could cut out all of them. Same story. You could cut out Oculus. You could cut out... All you really need is Nona, Deckham, Shuki, and a couple of those stories, and it's fine. Yeah. I'm, I'm not saying you should. I'm but just you saying could. You yeah. could. So I don't think it was a strong cast. I think the opening definitely makes it... Because like you're deceived by the opening right away. You think it's going to be a nice, fun anime. It's not. I'm not saying it's a good anime. I mean, the show's not. called Death Parade. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm just saying that the opening's definitely deceiving. And the opposite, uh, the OP is the exact opposite. Yeah, of what it but is. like, and like the opening makes you think, oh, this is going to be a cast that's really strong together. They're all doing stuff. Yeah, it's not. Like they're, 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 yeah, they they like, hardly interact with each other. Yeah, I mean, the guy that hates the, the arbiter that gets yeah. you is super annoying. He, like, he hates him. Like whatever. Yeah, he hates like, everybody. It's like I don't yeah. know. So I don't. The cast is meh to me, you know, and but I will say, uh, Pete, you're wrong on the minor thing because, uh, you know, she does have an iconic line. Uh, I had to pull it up to make sure I have it exactly right, and it's I pity you, Arbiters. I de- and she decided her fate for herself because maybe she didn't have a life that was others would be proud of, but she decided that she was going to devote it to Harada. And you know, I think that's a really touching line in a in an anime about deciding fates of going to an endless void of pain or being rebirthed. And then she so, got sent to hell, which was you, awful. You know, awful. awful. She yeah, went, she went to hell. She went to hell with someone she loved. <laughs> kind of. Yeah, how's that wait, going wait, for wait. her? With this lifeless <laughs> well, corpse. <laughs> yeah, well, like that's what I was saying earlier. Like she would rather not be rebirthed, and said she'd rather go to hell and continue her devotion to this guy than. Yeah being rebirthed and having no memory of him. So honestly, my story kind of hit different. <laughs> no, I'm just... Uh, I mean, that's I, the I beauty the of the story, sucks. right? Like, you can connect to different stories based off how, yeah. wherever you are in life or something like that. And I think we had that with Violet as well. But, like, I, I can see why, like, somebody like me didn't like episode 9 and someone like Miles did. And why I loved episode, like, 10 and maybe Johnny did it. Like, who knows? Like, that's, like, the like beauty it. of the show. And I don't think anybody's wrong. It's just, like, how we view things is great. And that's why, like, shows like this do, like, a great job at showing that. And I thought 9 was, was super extra, but I just loved that they addressed the fact that the Arbiters were doing, like, insane kind of evil stuff. Because if they hadn't, I'd probably have given this show, like, a 6. Um, but they did, and it was one of the main focuses, so it doesn't get a 6. Congratulations. <laughs> um, so, um, okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I think we can move on to our closing thoughts. Anything that we didn't No, address? God damn it, we're talking about the main story for at least 15 minutes. <laughs> we yeah, haven't talked yeah. about uh, Ona at all in the ice skating bit. And, like, that has not been touched. We have to touch oh, yeah, that. Oh, right. this is, that, this is a Yuri on Ice spinoff? Um, yes, how it's well, uh... a... That is the connection. It's connected to Yuri on Ice and Death Note. It's all in the same universe. <laughs> yes, Death... Okay, so... Who wants to quickly talk about their thoughts on the main storyline first? 
Since we're short on time, I'll go really fast. I thought it started slow. I enjoyed the ending. I thought how everything was concluded was done pretty well. Not perfect, but I thought it was done pretty well, and I, I left satisfied. To bounce off Pete, I would agree. I, I, I was kind of satisfied, although at the end of the day, I, um, I, I like that she is regretful about her, the decision she made, you know, and the... And how it's not framed in like a like a heroic light at all, because I don't, I, I don't know, I, I my views on this are very contra- uh, counter what most people's are, but I, I'm glad that she it is addressed that like what she did was terrible and and is not a an okay thing to do. Um, I I would say though that it sucks because there's no redeeming yourself in this scenario. Like what we've already talked about so much, there's no, it's either you're reborn and it doesn't effing matter anymore. It literally is irrelevant or you're damned for all eternity. And it's like, so I think that that kind of takes away from the, the final like hit of the story or whatever, like her getting reborn. It's like, well, she got reborn, but like didn't, doesn't matter. The, she's not her anymore, right? You know, well, I'd say there's nothing. She got to find peace with herself, and I'm going to take over for my little part here since we're short on time. Yes. Um, I, you know, I for me it was like extremely satisfying conclusion for her story. Like I, like she got to address her demon. She got to help someone else out with like Deckham by being there and like showing him what it meant to like be human and have feelings and stuff. Um, like I think that. You know, even if she doesn't get to remember it, her last conscious memories of who she was, like, you know, she got to end her existence um, in a way where she could be, you know, at peace with herself. And I think that that, that's like a very valuable thing, um, that she was able to recognize the value of her life at any point, even if it was right there at the end of the consciousness, like recognizing the value of your life and how much it means to yourself and others and people who are close to you is a very important thing. And not everyone, you know, that we saw got there at the end. So it, I thought it was good that she did. Um, I liked that they sort of slow dripped it, you know, like you, you could probably figure out she was an ice skater in some way by like episode three. And then you could slowly pick up on like more and more of her backstory and until they fully got into it. But you had the pieces. I thought that was really well crafted. Um, who else has thoughts on this? Anyone? I can I can do quickly. Uh, I thought it was good. I liked the uh, ice skating part a lot. Uh, I liked uh, exploring her backstory a lot. Uh, made me uh, actually care about her a bit. And I liked the conclusion to her story a lot because I like um, that she gets to be at birth and Deckham gets a little uh, fake her at the end too. You know. And now isn't that cool? He gets a little friend. <laughs> That that was cool. I so so that's the thing. I think uh, a better way to to bring up like like you, like you said, you see like her family or whatever, and you see like what her life was before. Like I don't know, like the because of what like she did. I almost like it for me. I feel worse for her parents, you know, or I feel worse for her mother. I think is the one that's really focused on or whatever. To right, like that's where. I don't know that that was the tragedy that I saw in it, which is what made me. Uh, again, it was it was beautiful. It was really well done, but it it made it hard. I I don't know. Yeah. Well, that's I the tragedy thought, I, she saw as well. She realized how much she hurt her mother and how she never intended to do that. And she yeah. just wasn't thinking of others. She was just too upset with herself and her life. You yeah. know, she didn't value things correctly, um, but she was able to, and she was able to, it like, not be selfish and try to steal that from someone else. Uh, to You know, which I think is, like, a important thing. That's sort of the difference between her and Mayu, right? Where Mayu was willing to take someone else for, uh, what's his name? Um, you know, but she wasn't willing to take another person's life. So she, she really does have that, like that. She finally does understand the value of life, even if it was, you know, a little bit too late for her to, to benefit off of it. Um, Rest I, I, it is good that she does come to that realization, I guess, by the end of it. But I still, uh, like, yeah, I don't know. Most of my sympathy was for the mother and the, and her family. That was, you know, heartbroken. And yeah, so, like, I, that, I, that I agree. Scene made, that scene made me ball my eyes out. You know, like watching the mother, like you know, 
walk in and greet her, greet her daughter or her gravestone or whatever you want to call it in the in the family den. Like that just broke me. I, I remember it was probably because it was like four in the morning too when I was watching it. But oh, that just ruined me. I was I was so dead. Um, but yeah, all right. Are right, now are we good to move on to our closing thoughts? We are now good. I'm sorry for commandeering that. We're gonna run a little long, no, and it's my I fault. Don't but I, I'm fine with it too. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to make sure we touched on the main arc there, you know, for anyone who's yeah. listening to us. <laughs> yeah, but those two minutes of us talking about the main arc of the show. There we <laughs> At go. least we got yeah. there a little bit. Um, great. Uh, right. Closing thoughts. Um, uh, well, why don't we start off with Miles? Yeah, absolutely. I very much like the show. I thought a lot of the stories were touching. Uh, it does suffer from like a little bit of that, like if you think about it too much, like a lot of the stuff sort of falls apart. But like honestly, a lot of afterlife systems and stuff do that, so I'm not going to blame it too much. That's um, very true. <laughs> that is so true. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, so and, and they acknowledge that they're doing a shit job and like trying to figure it out. So credit to them there. Um, uh, we talked about it a little bit, but oh my god, is the OP not the most pleasant thing in the entire world? Um, two specific scenes I want to point out in that that just make me smile with glee. Nona doing DDR. and oh, That's perfect. Yeah. Um, Mayu's hip shake thing mm -hmm. awoken something within me. We'll figure out what that is later. Um, I'm glad but, you also got awoken, because I did uh, too. Yeah, did that? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, it's a thing. Um, so, you know, that was um, <laughs> where we're at. Um, I'm scoring now, right? Yes. Do I score now? Yes. Yes. yes you yeah. Score. Okay. Um, eight out of 10 uh, is very good on Mal. I thought this was. Uh, you thought this. Uh... Man, everybody's yeah. having internet problems today. I was just saying, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Did Miles lag because I was so nervous for a second. Yeah. I'm not sure if I, if, if I lagged, I said eight, eight out of 10. Yep. You said 8 out of 10, it was... Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> oh, yep. It was very good. <laughs> Great audio content there, Pete. Thank you. I, um, yeah, so I'm here for the people. Yeah. You're a funny people, guy, The Pete. people appreciate you a lot there, I'm sure. Uh, Parf, what have you got for a score? Um, hmm, what do I have for a score? I mean, I, I, the opening really just bumps it up a whole point for me. Uh, <laughs> Just, you know, when you have an opening that good, you can't really be upset with the anime. I mean, you can't. Well, then I think of Domestic Girlfriend, so you can be upset. Uh, but, like, it is a great anime. I, I love the exploration of, like, death and everything and how, like, do people deserve this or not? I mean, I don't think anybody deserved either thing they got. It's too rigid to, like, with only two choices. Um, but I give it a 7 out of 10. Seven out of ten. Alrighty. Uh, Parf with the seven. Pete, what have you got? Yeah, so there were a lot of things I liked about this show that we didn't super touch on, but uh, like the technical things that I really enjoyed. I thought the music was fantastic. It added to like the omniance of the entire show, especially in episode ten. I thought it was really done really well. Um, I thought the character designs were great, especially like the outfits that people use, especially Nona. I thought her design was wonderful. I liked how her suspenders were like a little too big so then she could rest her arms in them. Just a little shit like that was like really fun. Um, there were some flaws with like the Arbiters that kind of took me away from the show a little bit, but everyone's dying right now uh, while I'm giving my review, but it was super fun. Um, I do think that you could cut out like two episodes and the story would have been like 98% of the same. But that being said, I would recommend this. I had a good time watching it. I'm giving it an 8 out of 10. All right, Cat. Sorry, we're all laughing because we're... we're it, for our no, visual, no, there's no reason. Our visual, our visual listeners will understand um, why we're laughing, and our auditory listeners will have to go and sub to our YouTube to uh, find out why we're laughing. Nice uh, plug. Nice plug. Yeah, thanks. Sick plug, Pat. Thanks, Pat. Uh, Pete, uh, just went... Yep. <laughs> There's two, I'm used to not. I'm not used to you going I know. Uh, this early on. Yeah, you don't usually come this early. Um, my, uh, hey, Pat. my man! <laughs> I got you. Uh, sick plug, Pat. Thanks, Pat. Um, oh, no, cat. twice. <laughs> cat. <laughs> cat, what do you got uh, for your final thoughts and your score? So, this is 
Okay, so here's the reason you guys may not like my uh, like my final thoughts. You definitely won't like my score if you guys are scoring this high. Um, I'm back to Sadista Cat. If you watched our earlier episodes, you understand what Sadista Cat is. Um, now, here's the thing. This show seems a lot better as a slice of life. And here's here's what I mean by that. This show's main storyline did not grasp me. It, this show's main storyline did not appeal to me, like, l- almost literally at all. And this... And the thing was, when it was, like, the different uh, storylines of, hey, here's all of this going on. Here's, uh... Like, if it was just the first episode and the second episode completely the same. And then every other episode, like all the rest of the episodes were just like, Hey, here's this. Hey, here's that. Here's this. Here's that. Here's this. Here's that. Um, like it would be like just random stories along the line, along the way. That would be great. I would have loved it, but it isn't like that. It is a lot more, it's just a bunch of different stories along with a, with, you know, with a story that didn't grasp me and I really didn't like it. And because of that, because at the end of the, of the show, it was just here, we, here is everything. And here is the story that this whole story was apparently leading to. I I had to dock my score like four points. No, not four points. I can't do math apparently. Uh, three points. So, I had to dock it nine points. One out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Absolutely. No. Shit. So I I had to dock it. Uh, Three points, and it is a five out of ten for me. So, yeah. All right. Okay. Well, uh, you know, I just decided to go out of order for no uh, apparent reason today. But Johnny, I forgot about you. What about you? What are your closing thoughts? Yeah. So, what I have to say about this show is that I, I think it's a very fun show. I don't think it's hard for like. Honestly, I'm surprised that anyone could give this like below a six. I I guess there's, like, a few things, like, maybe with the games or, like, the morality and, like, how they think, maybe that's the reason why you would give it lower score than that, but I don't, there's not a lot to hate about the show, and I thought it was, it was, it was a quite a fun ride, like, I, I had fun watching it, it was definitely, like, I wasn't bored at all when I was watching it, and it's just, overall, like, it was a fun experience, I'm gonna give it an 8 out of 10. Eight out of ten. All right, uh, and then I I still have to go. Uh, closing thoughts. Um, going back and thinking about the show again, I actually ended up lowering my score. Um, not not significantly, but um, and I think I was on the fence when I gave my first initial score, anyways. Um, but I, I this I I ended up giving the show an eight out of ten uh, because I I enjoyed watching it thoroughly. Um, I liked the topics that I discussed as well. I'm, I've always had. Um, I've always found death interesting and the way people handle death, the way people handle if they are, if their back's against the wall and they think they have a chance or if they have to fight for their lives, which of course in this case they had no choice or like they, they fought for their lives, but not in like a literal sense, but either way, like the way is seeing the emotions that they went through. And, uh, I thought that that, that was where the show peaked and did really well in, uh, but it definitely, I, Especially on second thoughts, I can agree with uh, a lot of the criticisms that you know Miles is able to bring up. Uh, that it, and also my own personal qualms with it. Where again, I just I remember watching it and being blown away, and then the ending pissed me off because I don't know, it didn't feel it didn't feel complete. It felt like we were missing episodes. Even though I agree with Pete, where I would say that this show could be shorter and it would be really freaking good. So still or better. So I don't know. Um, I think I, I voiced everything else I wanted to say about this, though. So I, I uh, originally had it at a 9, but after our discussion, I'm moving it down to an 8, which grants our total average score for Death Parade 
to a 7.33 overall. Uh, so not bad. That's about 0.8 points lower than it is on Mal. Uh, the average on Mal is at least. Uh, God, this is a top 50 show. It's kind of kind of crazy to think about. I, I do remember the, uh, the scores. In popularity, definitely... not ranking. Oh, Which it's in ranked. popularity. Yeah, yeah. It's ranked, ranked 336. It's... Yes, uh, it's ranked 336 overall, 48 in popularity. So that that's true. It is popularity. But that's still surprising to me. I thought it was a little bit more niche, but maybe it isn't. Um... Oh, it's crazy popular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, big popular. This might be, like, mm. one of the most popular originals I like, ever watched. Probably up there, yeah. Um, in terms of number, for, uh, total people, for sure. Um, especially, like, I feel like this is a show that if you aren't, like, into anime, you might stumble across, too, somehow. You know? I like, agree. Like, I feel like this is a show that Hulu promotes a lot, or whoever had it. Um, That's what I watched it on. Yeah, that's what I watched it on too. But like you know, but like I feel like I've definitely was it ever on Adult Swim. I feel like it might have been on. TV, um, yeah, you know? no, uh, I it was. It was so. There you go. That's probably another reason why it's up there in the popularity. Um, a weird show to be thrown into the Adult Swim block, but I mean, it makes. I guess it makes sense. Again, it, it could definitely appeal to Westerners. I think pretty well. Um, but yeah, all right, we're getting a little off topic. But yeah, so we're done here. Let's move on to our nominations. Uh, Johnny, why don't you go first? We're going spooky uh, nominations this week. What is your Wait, don't we have to find out nomination? what one first? I'm actually I'm... dying to find out. Oh, you are? Oh, well, that you know what? I forgot because I know already. But, you know, what? Oh, we can do who won first. So, Miles, go ahead. Um, So, we had four options. Vanitas 86, The Tale of Princess Kagaya, and Tower of God. Um, Who nominated Vanitas? That was I. Okay, Pete, you came in last place. Let's go. Um, so in <laughs> last place, the only thing not receiving legacy points or winning is Vanitas. So um, there we go. In third place, we had 86. Um, 86 is picking up its third. Even with legacy points, it got third place? Yes. Wow. Um, not that we include those in here, but yes. No, I'm um, for 86. Thank Tower you. of God came in a pretty strong second, earning its first legacy point. And the Tale of Princess Kagaya, or Kaguya, um, won. So we will be watching a Ghibli movie. Woo! Um, Man, who nominated fun. that movie? That's, That's huge. That was, that was me. I nominated it. Oh my god. Wow, Miles, you're kind of cool. I know. Hey god, if, 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 I'll say, if, if winning... Uh, you know, anime watch club shows was worth anything. I'd be richer than I am now, uh, but it's not. So I'm still poor. <laughs> um, we will um, be nominating our spooky shows now, as Pat was saying. So <laughs> you got there. We Miles. got there. Yeah. <laughs> You got there, Miles. So, Miles, since you got there, actually, why don't you go first? <laughs> I will. I'm really so prepared for this. I am. I'm going to be uh, nominating School Live. Um, nice. Which is horror mystery slice of life. Um, so. School Live. Okay. I definitely want to uh, check that out. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, 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 like, going for the Pete vote on this. It's got, it's like horror Yuru camp. Yep. That's like exactly what it is. Because don't they like live on? They live on like the roof of a school during a zombie attack or something. Well, you just spoiled the first episode, Pete. But yes, that's in the synopsis of the you show. You know, Pete. You know, Pete. I was excited to watch that. That's the synopsis. That. Wait, so it has zombies in it? Yeah, it does have zombies in it. Yes. Ooh, yeah, Sorry, my bad. An anime. Are we allowed to talk about zombies on this podcast? We are, we are now. We are now because yeah. the person who didn't like them is gone. Yeah. Uh, rest in peace. Uh, <laughs> we'll see him in like six weeks. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, see, see you in si uh, sleep in the same fucking apartment as you in six weeks. Yep. That's okay. <laughs> hey, I can't wait. I can't wait. Um, all right, Johnny, what have you got for your nomination? All right. So my my nomination is a movie that I wanted to watch. Uh, I think like two years ago, but I just completely forgot about. But you know, it's okay because I can watch it now if it wins. I'm going to be nominating. The Monogatari movie, he's the Monogatari. Just the one or all three? Yeah, you know, all three. I think all three is fine because that's about the length of a normal Season, series. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the first um, movie is like one hour long. 
Yes, it's very good. Uh, so yeah, there you go. That's that's uh, our first sequel that isn't being nominated in like an um. Yo, like hold the phone. Thing. Hold the phone. I think yeah. we're getting another <laughs> sequel. It, this is also a prequel. That's why I said it's our first sequel, or I guess prequel in this case. But either way, uh, that. Although I, maybe someone has done Monogatari before. But either way, what's your spooky recommendation, Parf? What is your super terrifying spooky horror-based uh, recommendation? Rosario <laughs> Vampire. Sorry, yeah. I'm just typing what I yeah, think yeah, it's yeah. going to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rosario Vampire Season 2, baby! Yeah, it's, it's like that's why he showed up. Oh my God. <laughs> that is why. It's almost as if. It's almost like that's why he's here right now. Um... Well, don't worry, Johnny. I'm in your uh, I'm in your boat with this. Uh, I'm in so much pain. Yeah, it's okay. Um, cat, you and your your cute little kitty cat. What are you guys voting for or nominating this week? Okay, buddy, save my nomination. All right, you're dumb. Um, Aww, so poor buddy. He, he I, does this all I the time. I have been I have been berating that cat all day. Um, my nomination is something that I think Pete would. Pete would like to rewatch. Oh, don't uh, steal my nomination, please. <laughs> oh, oh, then no, you probably should have told me. No, you're me. good. No, uh, so, of course, party. My nomination for the spooky show is Dura Hidera. You took my nomination. <laughs> <laughs> don't you should have told me. <laughs> um, it's really. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, actually, I haven't seen that. I'm actually excited was, for that. He was actually the reason why I watched it. Really? That's cool. That's yeah. fun. Alright. Okay. Um, well, I came into this thinking there's no way anyone's going to dominate Doro Hatero, so I didn't have a backup. <laughs> so I'm going to do the Miles and do the top 50 on Mal and find Wait, one that says... Pete, Jojo. I'm no, not going to do that. Yeah, uh, I have I have one one Part 1 how definitely about, counts. How, um, about, uh, how about High School of the Dead? I am going to nominate... Yo, wait, do that! Nope. I, I have another one. Um... Super popular like Death Parade, and I don't know how good it is. I think it's considered edgy. I'm gonna nominate another. Another. Oh, okay. about another. Show up down course party. Yeah. Uh, um. No. Alrighty. Um. He did right, popular, so... not ranked like I do. <laughs> yeah. I, I yeah, was. I was scrambling. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, and uh, yeah, so my last nomination for this was actually Elfin Lead, um, the last time we did this, about a year ago or so, um, and obviously that, we saw how that turned out, so I don't feel like talking about High School of the Dead, or at least nominating it myself, so what I ended up landing on when I was looking at my plan to watch was uh, the only horror show left in my plan to watch, and that is um, High Rise Invasion. Ooh. Uh, Ooh. Oh, I, no. oh no! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! I already know I won Hazes' vote, so I um. Oh. No, no, I you have a lot of competition for Hazes, dude. I got Hazes' vote for sure. Yeah, you're right. Maybe I think it, Haz maybe nominated not. another at one point, so. I need no, no, he did it for the secret. Santa. <laughs> yeah, we're all <laughs> fighting for Hazes' vote here. No, no, he give it to him for Secret Santa. Oh, that's right. Yeah, someone did give it to him for Secret Santa. So there you go. All right. Well, either way. We've got quite the ensemble of super spooky, sneaky shows, and then we've also got Rosaria Vampire. The spookiest. Um, very spooky. Lots of um, spookiness. Um, but yeah, all right. I think that that uh, wraps up our club this week. So uh, take it away, Pete. Yes, if you have made it this far into the podcast, I just want to say thank you very much. If you want to support us, the best way to do that is like, comment, subscribe, follow, leave a review, depending on whatever platform you are listening slash watching us on. If you're interested in talking anime, uh, we have a manga club. If you like book clubs, that meets every other Sunday. Stuff like that. Join our Discord. Link's in the description below. Um, in a week on Monday, we will be doing a topic that Pat thought of going over, like, maybe you could describe it better, Pat? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. So there's a book uh, that I read uh, for school for my university a while back, and it was about... It's called The Seven Basic Plots, Why We Tell Stories. It's a book in uh, from 2004, so pretty uh, getting old, pretty old, but it's a research book written by uh, Christopher Booker. And it's about, basically, if you were to take any fictional story, you can boil it down to one of seven basic plot points. And Miles, uh, Pete, and I are going to come in with a couple of shows from each of the 
the separate plot points where we're, we're going to come in and talk about what are some of our favorite ones, what, uh, which ones we think do do this type of plot the best, which ones do it really poorly, that sort of thing, and we'll, we'll just bounce off each other. It'll be a pretty free flowy conversation, uh, but it'll be interesting because I think there will be a couple, a couple times where shows where we might think shows are of one kind of plot while the other person might think of that show as something else, you know, so... I'm getting, someone... I'm getting Vietnam flashbacks of me thinking everything is deconstruction when it's actually subversion, and I look like an absolute idiot for an hour and a half, so... No, it's okay. Well, th- do your research on this book. You don't I'm just the not book. smart. That's the problem. If you read the full 700-page book before the end of... Or before next week, you're welcome to. That'd be great. You got it. But you can probably just read a synopsis or read what the seven plots are and do just fine. But yeah, like... You know, someone might, uh, like, uh, just an example, like, I don't know, would you call Violet Evergarden a quest, or is it more a tragedy? Is it a, a story of rebirth? You know, like, there's, and those are some of the, the plots, again, they go into more detail uh, as you look into them, but, uh, but yeah, so that'll be a fun discussion, I think, to have, that, where we can really just bounce off each other and uh, talk about some of our favorite anime, too. You know, it's a little sneaky, like, thing. Yeah, for sure. Thing. Um, but yeah, so that'll be a really fun, listen to that next week. Uh, and if you have any feedback on that beforehand, uh, bring it up in our discord for sure. Yep. So that'll that'll be in a week. Otherwise watch club will be me back here in two weeks time to watch the tale of princess Kaguya. We will see you then have a great time.